Hello friends, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Ajay Solkhe, presently working as Assistant Professor, University School of Management, Kurukshetra University, Kurukshetra, Haryana. Talking about the contents of this module, here we will be discussing some of the characteristics of industrial disputes. We will be discussing types of industrial disputes, outcomes of disputes, what are the causes that lead industrial disputes, measures for prevention and settlement of industrial disputes. In the end, we will be discussing statutory measures and voluntary non-statutory measures. Upon completion of this module, a student should be able to understand the characteristics, causes, types of industrial conflicts. He will be able to explain the various measures for settlement of conflicts that is both statutory and voluntary measures. He will be able to learn how to minimize industrial dispute and maintain industrial harmony. Industrial disputes, conflicts and introduction. Industrial dispute or a conflict is basically a difference of opinion between the employer and the employees over one or more issues. The primary aim of industrial relations exercise is dispute avoidance. Conflict is the very driving force of the industrial relations system of an organization. Industrial dispute or conflict typically manifest in the debilitating form of strikes, lockouts, picketing, ghost laws and giraffes. Section 2K of the Industrial Dispute Act 1947 defines an industrial dispute as any dispute or difference between employers and employers or between employers and workmen or between workmen and workmen which is connected with the employment or non-employment or the terms of employment or with the conditions of labor of any person is termed as industrial dispute. Now, what could be the characteristics of industrial disputes or the conflicts? The very first is an industrial dispute is a collective dispute between employer and employees. The dispute may arise out of disagreements between employers and employees over the terms of employment like wages and salary, incentives and benefits, workloads and so on. It could also be connected to the conditions of labor like working conditions, occupational health and safety and so on. Talking about the types of industrial disputes, so there are two types of industrial conflicts. One is in trust disputes and second one is right disputes. In trust disputes, these refers to the disputes related to the economic interest of the employees. They may relate to wages, incentives and other benefits of the employees. In short, an interest dispute relates to the conditions of employment of workers. Talking about the right disputes, these involve disputes over the understanding, interpretation and application of the rules and regulations which protect the rights of the employees. They may relate to the interpretation and implementation of statutory rules, company rules, collective bargaining agreements and employment contracts. Outcomes of disputes or the conflicts, they are categorized into four things, one is strike, second is picketing third is gherav and fourth is lockout. The very first is strike. Now, strike is a very important tool in the hands of the trade unions to exert pressure on the employers to achieve their demands. According to the Industrial Dispute Act 1947, a strike means a cessation of work by a body of persons employed in any industry acting in combination or a concerted refusal or a refusal under a common understanding of any number of persons who are or have been so employed to continue to work or to accept employment. Talking about the types of strike, so we have seven types of strike. Very first is general strike, second one is pen down, tool down and sit in strikes, third is wild cat strike, fourth is go slow, slow down and work to rule strike, then is sick leave and mass casual leave strikes hunger strike and lastly we have sympathy strike. General strike, it normally refers to a large scale strike organized by the employees belonging to an industry, a region or an entire country. Pen down, tool down and sit in strikes, in pen down, tool down and sit in strikes employees they report for duty but they do not work. In these form of protests the employees they just refuse to leave their place after entering the work premises and they remain idle. 
wild cat strike when employees resort to an unauthorized strike in violation of the labor contract or agreement it is called a wild cat strike go slow and work to rule strikes they are forms of strike in which employees work but not up to their usual levels or capacity employees participating in sick leave and mass casual leave kind of strikes they apply for sick leave or a mass casual leave mentioning sickness as the major reason the purpose of such mass casual or sick leave is to bring the work to a halt in order to achieve their demands in a hunger strike the employees undertake fasting by abstaining from both food and work as a means of protest sympathy strike the purpose of a sympathy strike is to express sympathy and solidarity with another group of striking employees belonging to a different category of employment in the same organization having a word about picketing in this method the striking employees assemble in front of the factory gates and attempt to persuade the non strikers to decide against going inside the premises and there by participate in the strike the intention of picketing is to achieve complete stoppage of work in order to increase the pressure on the employer gherav when it is a form of protest in which employees they encircle their employers or top managers at the workplace with a view to restrict their movements the wrongful confinement of any person is not legally tenable and therefore gherav is an illegal act lockouts a lockout is the employer's response to the employee's continued protest in the form of strike in a lockout the employer closes the workplace with the aim of preventing the employees from entering the factory premises and performing their job employers may resort to lockouts when there are large scale work disturbances incomplete production or abnormally high production costs talking about the causes of industrial disputes or conflicts the causes may be grouped in four broad categories industrial causes management's attitude towards the workers role of government machinery and other causes the very first is industrial causes grievances relating to employment that is work wages bonus hours of work privileges conditions of employment and obligations of employees and among other factors prominent are attitude of workers increasing prices and demand for increase in dearness allowance indiscipline and violence among the workers workers resistance to rationalization introduction of new machinery second line of causes management's attitude towards the workers prominent among it is disinterest of the management to discuss with the workers management's unwillingness to recognize a particular trade union not involving the workers in the decision making in adequate communication third set of causes is role of government machinery not successful in implementing labor laws inability of the conciliation machinery of the labor department irrelevance of certain provisions of labor laws in the context of challenges of present industrial climate and imperatives of development due to competitive environment and the last in the other causes is affiliation of trade unions with political parties political leadership thereby bringing pressures for accepting their demands political instability and poor center state relations contribute to industrial conflict character crisis in values of trade union leaders trade union rivalry need for change in outlook and attitude of the parties including the management also other important sources of union management conflict are profit security of jobs right to manage seniority productivity inflation moving on to the measures for prevention and settlement of industrial dispute or conflicts the machinery for prevention and settlement of industrial dispute or conflict comprises of two set of measures one is statutory machinery and voluntary machinery statutory measures are categorized into one is work committee conciliation officer boards of conciliation 
court of inquiry, voluntary arbitration, adjudication which is further categorized into labor courts, industrial tribunal, national tribunal. Then is grievance settlement authority, welfare officer, standing orders, central and state industrial relations machinery and other preventive measures. Very first of all is works committee. According to Industrial Dispute Act 1947, in establishments where 100 or more workers are employed, the appropriate government may require the employer to set up work committee. Now, this committee is composed of equal number of representatives of workmen and management who are chosen with consultation of the trade union. Its primary functions are to preserve amity and establish cordial relations and to resolve difference of opinion on matters of common interest. Conciliation officer. The conciliation officer may be appointed by the government for a very specified area or any specific industry. The duty of a conciliation officer is to mediate in and promote the settlement of industrial dispute or conflict. Wherever industrial dispute exists or is apprehended and relates to public utility, the conciliation officer shall hold conciliation proceedings and it is mandatory. Board of Conciliation. The government may notify the constitution of the conciliation board for promoting settlement of industrial dispute. Its role is also consultative, like earlier conciliation officer. For effective discharge of the duties, the conciliation officers and the board of conciliation, they are vested with the powers of a public servant as per section 41 of the Indian Penal Code. Court of Inquiry. When the government deems fit, it may order a court of inquiry for investigating all the members pertaining to an industrial dispute. Such an inquiry may be ordered as to identify the cause of the industrial dispute, to fix responsibility for the dispute, to suggest steps for preventing its occurrence in the future, to provide a solution to the dispute specifically referred to it. Voluntary Arbitration. It is a voluntary method of resolving individual disputes if the dispute is not settled by the negotiating parties. Here both the parties they are willing to go to an arbitrator of their choice and submit to his decision. Arbitrators they are named by the parties in the written agreement. The number of arbitrators can be one or even more than one. Legal sanctity to this mode of settlement of industrial dispute was given in 1956 when Section 10A was introduced in the Industrial Dispute Act. Adjudication. Now, adjudication is a court based decision making process that involves a third party and the judgments are binding on the parties. When the conciliation efforts fail and no agreement is reached, parties may take recourse to the legal process as a final option. Adjudication is usually a highly formal and time consuming process. Moreover, it is normally an involuntary and adversarial process. Labor Courts Labor Court like the Court of Inquiry, the appropriate government through gadget notification may constitute a Labor Court for setting an industrial dispute. Function of a Labor Court relate to matters as Legality of an order passed by the employer under the standing orders. Application and interpretation of standing orders. Discharge or dismissal of workmen or workmen. Withdrawal of any customary concession or privilege. Illegality or otherwise of a strike or lockout. All matters not specified for industry court. Industrial tribunal. It is one more option available to the appropriate government for settling the dispute between employer and employees. The powers and the functions of the tribunal are similar to that of the labor courts. The functions are all matters within the jurisdiction of labor courts, wages, compensatory and other allowances, hours of work and rest intervals, leave with wages and holidays, bonus shift, provident fund and gratuity, shift working classification of grades, rules of disciplines, retrenchment and closure of establishment. National Tribunal. National Tribunals, they are formed by the central government for adjudicating the industrial dispute conflicts which have implications for the entire nation or affect the industrial organization in more than one state. 
the powers, duties and functions of the presiding officer of a national tribunal are at par with those of the heads of the labor court. Grievances Settlement Authority. It is applicable to enterprises wherein 50 or more workers are ordinarily employed in the last preceding 12 months. This is for the settling of individual grievances of employees. Individual disputes or conflicts, they are to be referred to the courts when not settled at grievance settlement authority level. Another preventing measure is under the Factories Act 1940 that is the appointment of a welfare officer in the organization. If, if there are workers, 500 or more are normally being working in any organization where Industrial Dispute Act or a Factories Act is applicable, it is quite mandatory to appoint a full-time welfare officer. Standing orders. Another preventive measure is certification of standing orders by enterprises under the Industrial Employment Standing Orders Act 1946. These standing orders require enterprises to lay down uniform terms and conditions for the employment of workers. Central and State Industrial Relations Machinery Central Industrial Relations Machinery consists of the Chief Labor Commissioner and the Regional Labor Commissioner together with Labor Enforcement Officers. The machinery has regional offices. Their main functions are prevention, investigation and settlement of industrial disputes in industries or enforcement of labor laws and awards, verification of union membership, fixation of minimum wages and central implementation and evaluation machinery ensure implementation of code of discipline, labor laws, awards and settlements, take preventive action by settling disputes, evaluate major strikes and lockouts, labor laws and policy decision and suggest some of the measures to improve them. Among the voluntary or the non-statutory measures, the prominent are Code of Discipline 1958, Tripartite Bodies, Joint Consultative Machinery for Central Government Employees, Collective Bargaining, Workers' Participation in Management Scheme. Friends, I hope you have understood the contents well. You can also refer to other quadrants of this module for testing your knowledge and having some more input on theme of the module. Happy learning!